Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. I'm John Magi, and I'll be your host. And I'm joined at the pa- at our panel this week. I have Tracy Heinrichs, hi, our agent <laughs> consultant, Kevin Close, hi, everybody, our client services manager and Adventures by Disney specialist, Teresa Eccles, our Welcome Center manager and Disney Cruise Line specialist, hey. And our technical team today is made up with associate producer Ryan O'Clavin. Hello. And producer Craig Williams. Hi. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. This week, we're going to talk about a Viking cruise that Kevin and I had a chance to go on. In October of 2015, Dreams Unlimited Travel hosted 30 guests on a Viking River cruise in France. It was the first time uh, we ever had we've done a group uh, on Viking. And uh, we have a lot of really great information to share with you. We're going to talk about the ship itself, and then we're also going to talk about the itinerary. We're going to break this up into two parts. This week will be uh, focused primarily on the ship and the processes of the ship and the food and things like that. And then next week we'll talk about um, the itinerary and what we experienced in France. So um, we're going to get started. We're going to talk a little bit about embarkation. Um, the reason why I want to talk about embarkation is because this is like nothing I've ever experienced in my life, ever. This was the weirdest getting on a ship I've ever had in my life. But that's because we compared it to right. ocean cruising. Yeah, never been on a Viking cruise before, never been on a river cruise. We Tell us about it, because you remember you had the same reaction I did. I did. We, st- we had pre-nights. Uh, we stayed in Paris for a couple of nights beforehand, and we took the shuttle. We took a bus to the dock the viking cruises used to dock in paris but that uh has changed they're now now docking about 11 miles outside of paris in a town called la peck we'll talk about la peck later but we took our bus out and the bus stopped in the parking lot and they told us our luggage had been tagged so they would bring it to our room so we could get on the ship and we walked up a gangplank the gangway and Got on the ship. No one said anything to us. We just walked down the ship. And there was no else, security. Nobody scanned our bags. Nobody asked. I didn't who have we to were. go through a metal detector. I got on the ship, and they said, "Oh, hi. Who are you?" And we told them who we were, and they said, "Oh, do you want the keys to your room?" We said, "Yeah." And he gave us the keys to our room, and then said to us, "Did you get wine and cheese and snacks?" I said, like, are they out? He goes, "No. Did you bring any with you?" I said, no, we didn't bring any with us. And he said... So it's potluck? <laughs> Did I, am I supposed to bring enough for everybody? <laughs> right, right. He says, there's a grocery store across the street. You should get some wine and some cheese and some snacks. Uh, all right. So we walked to our room. That's it. There was no, can we see your passport? There was no, do you have to go through a metal detector? There is no... Wait, okay. I, I, I'm looking at the picture. That red thing, you had to go up That's that? That's our gangway. You had to go up that thing? It depended on w- when tide. you docked, what the tide was in the okay. river. Because there were times when that was absolutely flat. Because I, I, looking at it like that, I would need assistance. Someone would have to be behind me. I so have to tell you, at times it was steep. The gangway actually had metal rungs screwed into it for the yeah, times that it was the steepest. Bars. To give you traction up it was or padded. down. For the most part, though, they the nice thing, too, is they could adjust it so sometimes if the tide was too high you got on the second level as opposed to the third Uh, level. we got off one day and it was very very steep by the time we got back to the ship the ship had leveled out and we walked on fairly flatly so it was it's very unusual for us and we were kind of we didn't really know if we did it right it was like something else is supposed to happen here anybody listening to this show is going to think that we've never been anywhere before we've never been on a river cruise before and this all we had to compare it to was the word cruise. So we've compared it to Royal Caribbean and Disney and Norwegian. This is an entirely different beast. Right. And something we came to learn quickly is it's a very different cruise, even from the aspect of the ship. The ship is much smaller, obviously, than any other. It held about 200 people. Right. Cruise we've been on. Um, beautiful ship. Beautifully decorated. Um, there are three pointed. decks. The lower deck is all uh, residential. The second deck is residential and the dining room. 
And the third deck is residential and what they called the Akavit Terrace. And that was a multi-purpose room. It was a bar. It was where they held informational meetings about your next stop. They served light lunch and dinner in there. And about two-thirds of it are under cover with glass. And then there's a part that's an open deck. I apologize. There is a fourth deck. The fourth deck is the roof of the ship. And it is an outside area. There are solar solar panels up there. There's a walking track. There were chaise lounges and chairs to hang out on. Now, we were not in outdoor weather. It was between 45 and 50 degrees and damp and drizzly. But there is an upper deck. I don't think many people used it. Oh, that's where the smoking area is. But... There are no activities on this ship. There are no casinos. There are no nightclubs. It looks like a painted barge. It's actually a very beautiful ship. It's a really, yeah. really beautiful ship. I want to talk a little bit. I apologize. There's Please the Akavit Terrace, if you can see that so, picture. The ship is basically your transportation and accommodations. Right. This is not the place. It's not designed so that you're spending any amount of recreational time there. It's your hotel and your restaurant. Right. But once you sort of got used to that, then it all made sense. Um, talk a little bit about our uh, lifeboat drill. Again, we only have ocean cruising to compare this to. We were told to bring our life preservers to the top deck. So all 200 people were up on the top deck, and we all stood there. And there were 30 of us, so all 30 of us sort of conglommed together, and we sort of stood there. I keep saying sort of. We stood there talking to each other, and no one said anything to us. And I thought, this isn't very well organized. But then you start to think about it, and you think, I don't think we're in water that's very deep. If this boat sinks, this top lever is still going to be above water. The other thing you do is you look around and you go, okay, there's no lifeboats. What are we doing up here? Why is this a lifeboat drill? There's not a lifeboat on the ship. And the other thing you realize is, I am fairly certain that I might be able to stand up here. And if I can stand up, I'm pretty sure I can make it to shore. So after we were all stood there for about 10 minutes, they said, okay, you can go. No one made an announcement. We didn't have to wait for the seven short beeps and one long beep. No one showed us how to put the life preserver on. So they just wanted to make sure you knew, A, what the life preserver looked like. Yeah, where and where to go. And B, how to get to the top deck. However, this was done on a day when there was a shore excursion where there was shuttles in and out of Paris. So two of the husbands in our group, and they knew who they are if they're listening, saw that we were having the lifeboat drill and went and sat on the, <laughs> the wall across the street from the ship till it was over. So it wasn't... It wasn't like they didn't take attendance. I, they didn't. Do this anything. was more of a suggestion than anything right. else. I have a question. Did the day that you embarked, was everybody getting on the same time or was it kind of get off, get on in different areas? No, people were staggering on the and day off. Of, the day the cruise started, our cruise started on a Monday. However... This was a learning experience. Our ship did not leave Monday. We stayed docked in the same area, and people had the opportunity to take the shuttles back in and out of Paris. We did not leave the dock until Tuesday night. So the ship stayed in the same place for two days. And you went and did other things. Now, they did tell us on the second day that if you were getting off the ship in the morning, you couldn't come back until 3.30 because the boat was going to move. And we said, well, where's, where's the boat going to go? And they said, well, nowhere. But how do we find it? It's just going to pull out and go up and down the river for a little bit and come back. They didn't actually say this, but I get the feeling that someone else needed to use the dock. Uh. So they were just vacating it for a short time. But it was that was the difference. Um, this does not look like an ocean liner. It doesn't feel like an ocean liner. It is, you described it as a barge. It is a hotel on water. And there's a very nice restaurant. In an, a, a lounge. Um, they do have a store. They said to us, don't forget to, somebody made the announcement, don't forget to visit the ship store. So I went looking for it, and it's in the lobby, and it was six shirts, two hats, and a book about we actually, Vikings. We actually have a picture. I'd like to show these guys a picture of the store that we ha- that we took. The other thing I want to point out, too, is one of my favorite parts of the lifeboat drill. Oh, there's the, the store. One of the favorite parts of the, yeah, there it is. It's giant. Don't get lost in the store. <laughs> It was so hard to find. It was really hard <laughs> it to find. It looked like a closet. Or your way around. <laughs> um, the other thing, is too, was that we were told over the loudspeaker that everyone had to go to the lifeboat drill because it was mandatory. <laughs> the gentleman did say, this is mandatory. That was, <laughs> the word, that was the word of the week. And we all went, 
What does that mean? <laughs> What's mandatory? Mandatory. mandatory. So you know how they show you you're supposed to put the life preserver on, you put it over your head, and you wrap that cord around you, and you buckle it over here? Well, my buckle didn't reach. So I said, that I went up to a person, and I said, um, is there a larger size? My buckle doesn't reach. Oh, she goes, just hang on to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what we're trying to do that if I'm clutching all of my <laughs> stuff in my Louis Vuitton bags. <laughs> I want to make that this sounds like we're... Um, right, it sounds like we're, we're bashing it. I think what happened was when we first got on, it was so different than what we were used to that it took some time to get used to what it more was. More laid back. Right. And then once, much more laid back. Once we got on, the experience was really incredible. The interior spaces of the ship are beautiful. Um, this is one of their newest ships. It's the Rinda, and it's a long boat, so, which is one of the reasons why we didn't dock in Paris is because it's a little bit too big for the docks in Paris. Also, because there are so few people on, people are extremely friendly. And I don't mean overly friendly. I just mean they were... I mean, you see the same people over and over again. So it was... Craig, bring there's... this picture up. This is the library. Again, don't get lost in the library. <laughs> it's literally at the end of a hallway. Before it's actually get... in the center of the ship. Right. It's just above the check-in desk. And it's just some chairs and a lamp. And when the weather got cool, and they knew people were going to be in and out of the ship, they put throw blankets on the back of all the chairs. So if you were sitting there, because... I know you can't see it, but just in front of that, there was a sliding glass door on each side, and you go out either side of the ship. So those doors opened fairly frequently, but they wanted people to be comfortable. And right across that was the internet lounge, which was two computers and two rolling chairs. Yep. So, I mean, it was, you know, it's, again, it sounds like we're making fun of it, but it was just because it was so such a, such a different It experience. was truly a learning curve. But this, the like ship a, is beautiful. The interiors are beautiful. Um, it's very modern, very the, Swedish. Did you talk again about how the there's so uh, few staff that you see the staff everywhere, and the staff is doing multiple jobs? I have to tell you, it was amazing. Um, we had a beautiful blonde woman named Connie, and she was our cruise director. She was the person that greeted you when you went into the restaurant. We saw her loading bottles of water on the uh, ship one day. She was carrying luggage to the room. She was a tour guide on one of the tours. When I tell you they serve multiple purposes, they serve multiple jobs, they wear many hats, they were incredible. Just incredible. We had a set of twins on our ship. One was a waiter and one was a bartender. The waiter's name, or the waiter's name was Zoltan. Was the bartender Isaac? Paul. Oh. <laughs> That's disappointing. <laughs> we, we don't know where that conversation was in their house when they were born. Yeah. <laughs> like, who got Let's the... name this one Zoltan. Uh, they were very nice. Sweet guys. Uh, it's a very long ship, and the staterooms are laid out. The least expensive staterooms are on the lowest deck. They have porthole windows. And then as you get up to the second deck, there are balcony and what they call French balcony staterooms. A balcony actually has a place where you can go out and sit. And a French balcony means that you have a set of sliding doors, but there's a railing right there. So you can slide the door open, and you can look outside, but... That's as far as you can go. And some of the staterooms have a French balcony in the bedroom and out in a sitting area. There are, are staterooms that have a sitting area. Deck three, the highest deck, are the bigger staterooms. That's where most of the rooms with sitting areas are. And on the back of the ship, there are two suites. They call them explorer suites. And the explorer suites consist of it's a really one big room, but they divide the bedroom off with two sliding doors, which meet at a 90-degree angle and create a bedroom. This is the room that Kevin and I had. Um, again, it was the biggest one on the ship. And again, I have to go back to, you know, we've sailed on other cruise lines and we stay, we stay in suites. So we walked in and we went, oh, this is really small. This feels really small for a suite. But then we saw what other people were staying in and we went, okay, this is gigantic. This is a picture of our suite right here. We had a sofa and a couple of chairs. One of the nice, the nicest thing about it was we had on a balcony on each side of the back of the ship. It was an L-shaped balcony that went around our whole corner of the ship. Um, and we had three sets of sliding glass doors. So that's the other part of the... And four tomatoes. <laughs> tangerines. 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 Oh, I was surprised. <laughs> they changed the fruit out every day. Yes. Every day. 
Whether we ate it or not, we right. have fresh fruit. I'm not entirely sure that they threw that fruit away or that the next group saw it again. I think what your tangerines just, they went down to deck one. <laughs> no, they didn't even get our leftover so tangerines. Like, yeah, I think that's what happened. There's our bedroom. Now, we're going to tell you a story about what happened in our stateroom. Oh, but oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, should should we me. give it a warning first for children that might no. be listening? No. Okay. <laughs> On the, uh, if you're looking at this picture, the bed, cl- the side of the bed closest to the window had enough room to actually stand up. We had a mishap in our stateroom. We're going to go through that. We have some slides to show for that. What happened was the other, when we had a move, in the other room, I was on the other side of the bed. And when I stood up, there was not enough room on the floor for me to put my feet down. So I had to stand up, like in ballet, fifth position, with my feet out, straight out, like this. And I would have to stand up and then do this Spider-Man move against the wall. <laughs> wow. so inch my way and is this what we have slides of? No, we do not have slides of Kevin doing the Spider-Man. I am a little. I am a little. So during the course of, again, our room was beautiful. We loved it. The The bathroom was very nice, very spacious, nice shower. Very modern. Very How accessible is the ship? Like, I see that big steep to get in. You're talking about going to different levels. Are not there elevators on There's board? an elevator between floor two and three. We actually have a picture there of the There is not an elevator to the top deck where you'd have to go for a lifeboat drill. Oh, okay. And there is not an elevator to the least expensive rooms. There is literally an elevator that goes between the two main floors. That's, and when you walk in, are you walking in on deck two? It's Depends. either deck two or deck three. Okay. Now, one day, we were near a lock, and we actually did have to go up on... We The boat was riding low in the water. And it these are very old docking places. Sure. So we actually entered on the top deck. So... Handicapped accessible. I didn't look at a handicapped accessible stateroom, but getting on and off the ship. Now, there are these these amazing cast members or people who are help working there that are quite willing to like hoist you up and walk you sure. up and down and stuff. Mm-hmm. However, that's not really handicapped accessible to right. me. If you were, you would have to stay on either deck two or three because that's the only place where the elevator is. But the good news is that's where the restaurant is, as then right. the lounge is. So you can get to. The major location. Unless your stateroom is on deck three, or on the lowest deck, deck one, there is not a reason to go down there. There's there's nothing public about it. It's staterooms, and the upper deck, it's an outside sitting area. If you wanted to go up there, you had to be able to climb stairs. Let's uh, let's show a couple more pictures of the interior of the ship. That is the main lobby of the ship. That's the staircase from deck three to deck two. In the back corner where there's a TV, that's where the concierge is. If you want help when you're in port with an activity or a tour or information, it's back there. And beyond that, behind the staircase, there's two sets of double doors. And that's where the dining room is. And we'll talk about the dining room later. That's the dining room. Yes, we have a picture of the, uh, the dining room empty. And it was what really amazed me about the dining room is when we walked in, I thought, well, this is really small, and there's only one on the ship, and everyone has to eat there at the same time. There's only one dinner seating. Mm-hmm. However, they accommodated everybody beautifully. They served everybody on time. It was really, really great. There were some shocking things about the dining room. The restaurant, the dining room I thought was restaurant quality food. The food was excellent. There was a couple of things that were not to people's taste. One night they served frog's legs, and you got to choose, or was it oh a yeah, set there menu? were options. There okay. was always a. And before dinner, the chef would come out in the lounge that was up on the second floor, the third floor, excuse me, and he would tell you what was available for dinner. I mean, people would go to this. It's like a bar atmosphere, like a lounge, and he would talk about what was available on the menu that night and what his suggestions were. So it was, it was lovely, and the food was great. Breakfast every day was half buffet, or you could have an omelet station, or they would bring you out hot food. Um, lots of choices for pastries and... Uh, Meats and cheese. Right, and, and things like that. And it was really good. It, well, every day the food was very good. Seemed One of the things that was a, a, a source of conversation before we started was the alcohol package. You can buy an alcohol package that includes all your drinks. However, 
wine is available at lunch and dinner. And being someone who's worked in the travel industry, you assume they're going to offer you a glass of wine. The wine was completely free-flowing. Anybody wow. who's concerned about not getting enough wine, at one point, one of the ladies said to us, she asked our waiter if she could get some more wine, and he said, I'm really busy, but right over there are all the bottles of wine. Help yourself. So she went and got a bottle of wine and sat it on the table. And no, I mean, no one even flinched. If you want mixed drinks, you could buy those in the bar, in the lounge, and they were at your cost. However, to make the drink package work as far as financially, I think you would have to stay on the ship and never get off. Yeah. Somebody did the calculation, and it was like you know seven or eight drinks a day, mixed drinks a day you'd have to consume, and it just wasn't worth it for anybody we were traveling with, especially because the wine was so free-flowing. And dinner. the thing is, when you're on the ship, I, I, this is going to sound negative, and it's not. There's nothing to do on the ship other than sit, go to your stateroom or sit up on deck or drink in the lounge. These are... These itineraries are built so that when you get to a place, you're off the ship and explore. Was the ship moving only at night? And then we'll right talk about day. that in a minute. Yeah, that's, I don't mean to... that's for when we talk about the itinerary of the okay. ship. And Let's how talk we... about that for the next section. Yeah, okay. and um, going back to what there is to do and not do on the ship. Um, I lost my train of thought. They do. Did you talk about the um, how they do seminars? No, nope, there was a seminar. In the lounge every day that we were going to a new port. For instance, when we went to Rouen, or if they say in France, Rouen, if when we were going there, that's where Joan of Arc was crucified or whatever. Yes. Burned at the stake. Burned at the stake. Yeah. There was a whole seminar the day before we got there about Joan of Arc, if you wanted to attend. A, a, a seminar history lesson. There was a local expert who talked about the area <laughs> and what there was to see and do. So there, there was that. And again, when I tell you there's nothing to do on the ship, that's not what these ships are built for. These are not ocean-going vessels where you're going to spend hours and days on the ship without seeing land. The vast, vast majority of time, you are docked. And the, this is your hotel. This is a place to sleep and shower and have dinner or have meals. And when we go into the itinerary, one of the great things is you can see that they offer different shore excursions, different options for people, and there's a lot to do either where they park the boat or where they're taking you. So I never felt like I was missing anything. I was never and, bored. And it's never like we sat around thinking, what are we going to do? Uh, we have to go back to the story that we sk skipped we over. Do, we do, we do. So um, about halfway through our cruise, we are getting ready to go to into uh, on a shore excursion one day. And it was a very early morning. We had to meet our group early for breakfast. It was the day we were going out to Normandy. Correct. And, and we, the ship comes within two hours of Normandy. Okay. So you have to get off the ship, and then there's a bus ride out to the American Cemetery and the beaches at Omaha Beach. And right. So, but you were leaving at 8 a.m. So we had to be, and that was, you had to have breakfast and then be off the ship. Go ahead. So we were in the process of getting ready, and I went into the shower to use the shower for what it's intended for. Okay. And I closed the shower door, mm -hmm. and as it sort of hit the little rubber bumper where the door is at, its where it's most closed, yeah. the shower exploded. The shower door absolutely, look at the picture, this is, just went completely to shattered glass. It looked like the scene in Die Hard where he's crying. How did you get out? Before you take the picture? Yeah. No, that's my reflection in the window. Can you see me? <laughs> yes, I got dressed before I took the picture. <laughs> John stood in the shower, ready to take a shower, and said, I don't know what to do. I can't move. And I said, hang on. And I went and got him sneakers, and I handed him sneakers. This is the floor of the shower. I don't know if you can really see how much did you, glass. Did you hear it from where you were? It sounded like something exploded. So there were two stationary pieces of glass, and then there was like a sliding barn door. Yeah. So he said, what am I going to do with sneakers? I can't, I have no place to sit. And I said, all I kept saying to John is, are your eyes okay? Are your eyes okay? Because I thought, if he has glass in his eyes, this is an issue. Yeah. So I went, we had a, a throw blanket in the room, a very thick, heavy throw, like a 
Com- not a comforter. Like like if you were sitting on the couch and you right. were cold. So I went and I laid that down, and John walked out on that. Um. So I called the the wow. desk and I said, the bathroom door exploded. <laughs> There's glass everywhere. We just had a fight. I had the shower door. I don't know what to do. And he had the most charming response. Oh, dear Lord, I don't know either. <laughs> there you go. Not helpful, not helpful at all. So somebody was supposed to go with us and stay in the room next to ours. So we knew at one point that room was empty. It was a mirror image of ours. So I said, is anybody in the suite next door? And he said, no. We never sold that. I said, can we use the shower? He said, yes. I said, you can need to bring have somebody bring me some keys. So they brought us the keys, and we were next door showering. And in the meantime, they called us up, and they said, while you're off the ship, we will move all of your stuff to the other, to room. The other room. And we said, okay, but we moved our stuff ourselves. But later that day, the Connie, the cruise director, said to us, I'm really glad we had another room available because I don't know what we would have done. We don't store extra shower doors on the ship. So what I didn't say was John came out of the bathroom and it looked like John had been spray painted or with a Windex bottle with red paint. He had thousands of little tiny cuts all over his body. Oh my God. Luckily, I wiped myself off and I was fine. Nothing. I was not cut. There was no open cuts. I didn't continue bleeding. Oh but it was the weirdest experience. It looked like he had been poked with hundreds and hundreds of little pins, just enough to draw a bead of blood. Oh, my God. So they were very nice about it. They oh, couldn't apologize more. They, they sent something sent to the room. A small gift. I think it was a bottle of champagne and some chocolate to Band-Aids. our room. <laughs> really? Some bactine. Bactine. <laughs> it was... It just exploded. Wow. Very nice about the whole thing. But luckily, that room was available, so we had some place to stay. And that's the, the story of how it was an exact mirror image of ours. And Kevin had to get up like Spider-Man. I did. I had to ballet myself out of bed. Luckily, we were able to do all of this, get ready, get our stuff moved, and we still made our shore excursion. Wow. So it was, it was a hectic little morning that we had going on. So um, we talked to, about... What there is and isn't to do on the ship. Um, really, the ship is about the ports that you visit and the places that you go. We talked about how the first two days are really in Le Pec, which is just outside of Paris. Now, we had gone in on a pre-night, on a pre-stay, and stayed in Paris. So when we were on the ship those days, we did go in one day and shopped a little, but we didn't really take advantage of that. But We had had four very active days in Paris where we saw and did most everything we were looking to do. So having that second day where the boat was docked, uh, as we said, there was a small grocery store across the street. We did stuff like that, and everybody kind of was okay taking a nap and sort of chilling out because we had had a very busy couple of days in Paris. So not moving was okay. Some of the things they did offer on those days to folks who you know wanted to do stuff was they offered a shuttle into Paris, Brought you in, dropped you off at a certain spot, picked you back up, and brought and that you was back. included, right? So there was no charge included, for that, exactly. Which is really incredible when you think about mm-hmm. it, because that's sort of I think a fear people have is, well, what am I going to do? The boat has arranged this for you, and arranged the transportation and made everything available to you. Do it. You don't have to do it. It's up to you. But it's really great. And they did offer um, tours in Paris once you were there, if you wanted to do them. Uh, at the end of the tour. The last day, you get off. You get off the ship on Monday. The ship actually docked on Sunday night, so we were at the dock very early Monday morning. And there were a couple of tours that you could take that did cost extra. There was a trip out to Versailles, and I believe that was one forty-five a person. But that was an all-day adventure. And then there was also a guided tour of the Louvre. And that, I believe, was 120 a person. Most of that is just because there's a charge to get into those. Right. Don't hold me to those exact numbers. So there's uh, your shuttle was included. Uh, there are city tours each place you're docking. Mm-hmm. And then excursions. In addition there to may that. be special excursions mm-hmm. outside Let me of also, that. I want to expand on that a little bit. For the first two days in Lepec, they offered folks one was a daytime tour of Paris. And it was a nighttime tour oh, of Paris. Nice. Mm-hmm. The people actually were able to go and see the monuments at night lit up. So these are 
really great things, especially if you've never been to these cities before. Great overview stuff you can do. Really fantastic. And the way they run them, it's not just, okay, here, get on a bus and go. You have the cruise director gets on the bus with you. Local guides get on the bus with you. There's headsets in everybody's room, those those um, wireless headsets. So those are yours for the entire cruise so that you can hear the person talking about what you're seeing and what you're visiting. So. You also could have used the shuttle to just go into town or whatever port you were in and do what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when people hear river cruise or even ocean cruise, you always end up with a stateroom bill at the end of your trip and people live in fear of that stating out that i don't drink alcohol my portfolio at the end of the ship was one diet coke that was all i bought extra because things were so readily available our group got a shipboard credit and some of them said i didn't even use the whole shipboard credit because there was just nothing to spend any money on very very unless you bought drinks but because your day was so active off the ship, it wasn't like there was time. There wasn't really a place where you could just hang out and have cocktails. You were busy. It was a busy day, unless that is what you chose to do. So after years and years of selling river cruises, I've never been on one. I always envisioned it as sort of like an escort tour, kind of like an ABD, except that the ship itself, that's your bus in between you know, city to city, your your ship, your stateroom, that's your hotel. And then you go and you do other things outside of that. Exactly. So like on an ABD, you wouldn't spend time in your hotel doing activities. Right. You go out and about. Exactly. And so these activities, these shuttles, some of these shore excursions, they're included, uh, just like they would be on an ABD or a The land. majority are. Yeah. And the difference would be, and like with an ABD, if there's something special or unique you want to do, you would pay extra to do that. Um, and then, so it's really that kind of thing without having to pack and repack. Correct. Every couple days. The like other, you do on a land. The other comparison you can make to an Adventures by Disney is that because you see the same people over and over again, and because the cruise director is always traveling with you, you really feel like these folks are taking care of you. Right. I mean, they know us by name and everything, you know, how are things and what can we get you and what can we do for you? And, you know, um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things we did different than mm-hmm. the what was offered by the ship. And it was always a concern of, are you okay? And what can we do to help you? Concierge was right on the money with, there were people on our, our, our group who wanted to do their own thing and sort of go off and do special things and they made dinner reservations for you and wow. transportation for you they really took care of people. i also don't want to make it sound like you're on a bus all the time in several of the places we stopped where you could get off the bus or off the ship and you were right there right yeah, yeah. Right. i think the paris right. thing is it was kind of a unique situation right the size of the ship i think they've changed the long ships to outside right i had heard that they were going to run a test from what i understand the problem is that they're concerned about the long ships turning in the center of Paris because it takes them about five or ten minutes to make the turn. And I think they're afraid of taking up that much river time. Right. So what's happening is they're taking them out of the to a less busy part of the river to do this. It was my understanding that they were going to run a test. I haven't heard that anything's changed. And what they told me on the ship was, no, they were going to park in Le Pec from now on. And unlike the larger vessels, the major, the large cruise ocean liners, uh, you're getting into smaller areas, smaller communities, small towns, and get, in many cases, docking right in the center of the, the action. The other thing, too, is you're also, in a lot of cases, every place we stopped, we were like the only people there, right. meaning only tourists right. there, right. because it wasn't a giant cruise ship of 5,000 people getting off all at once, so and more intimate experiences, mm-hmm. more romantic experiences. It's exactly in my head. You've got how, it absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Now... We're going to talk about this in our next show, but we did a round trip cruise. Right. Which are somewhat unique, right? I'm not sure how many of them are. This is you go from Paris out towards Normandy, but you actually don't get to Normandy. You go to Rouen and then you come back. We will talk about that in the next show and what we thought about it, but I think it is unique. And what we've talked about is we would, we would definitely do a river cruise again. Absolutely positively. We've already actually talked about lining a couple up, but we would do one that wasn't round trip. Right. 
Oh, some, and maybe something that's going to hit more than one country, because you can do them where you're hitting two, three, yeah. four countries. The reason we chose this as our first trip was multifold. Um, first of all, nobody who that had been on, who went with us had ever been on one. Right. People usually break their vacation up into weeks. This was a one-week vacation. Right. This was a fly into and out of the same airport. It was a round trip flight. And we knew that we've been to Paris. Right. So the beginning of the end of the mm -hmm. trip are in Paris. So I knew that would be This was the gateway. This right. This was a way to say, do we even like this form of travel? And I think the people who went with us tells tell us that they really did. If I were to do this again, I would choose a different itinerary that was a little bit longer. Uh, there aren't a lot of seven night itineraries. They're usually Nine, mm -hmm. eleven, even up to fifteen, and I believe there's some that are several. Yeah, weeks. there's a beautiful one that's like twenty-three nights. Right. Wow. But this was this was our first taste, and I wanted to make something that people could use one week of vacation, buy a round trip airfare, mm -hmm. and know that they were going to at least be in Paris. So that was the reason for this choice. I want to make sure that we also leave people understanding that when we talk about in the beginning of this conversation was a lot of, this was very different to us. This was very unusual to us. We found this strange. That's the way it started. But by the time it ended, we fell in love with that ship. And oh, yeah. We fell in love with this it type was home. of cruising. And the people were mm -hmm. your friends at this point. I think, I think you're right. I think the biggest thing was we had nothing to compare it to. We compared it, when you use the word cruise, we compared it to getting on the Disney Magic. And it is, it couldn't be, it couldn't be more different if it tried. Right. right. And how did you find with only 200 people, that's a very intimate, I know Chris and I have talked about this, my husband, that one of our hesitations in getting on a river cruise is the social aspect of it. On a very large cruise ship, we can kind of get lost in the corner somewhere and not really, whereas it seems like on a river cruise, you're social, you're in with these people. There aren't, I didn't notice any tables for two. Right. So your meals are now breakfast is kind of hit or miss. Right. There were people there, there were people not there. Lunch was hit or miss because they served lunch, but in port it was Most for, people I don't think ship. the restaurant was ever completely full. There was one day on a ship that I didn't feel well, so I didn't go off the ship and did have lunch in the dining room. I don't think it was a third full. So there is that. At night Pretty much everybody on the ship is in the dining room. So you're kind of going to have to talk so to them. I know Adventures by Disney is gone into river cruising a little bit to make it more of a family experience, but you would agree that this is really not for families. I got to tell you, I don't, I don't know how young children would enjoy any of the ports unless you've got a kid who's really into history because they're very history-intensive ports. Um, yeah, there's not a on the trip we were on. There wasn't a water park anywhere. Right? There's no. no, there's no pool on the. Cruise and even ship the staterooms. I mean, the staterooms sleep too. And I believe some of the river cruising companies will even say they'll even look almost strongly suggest you not bring your children. Well, Disney is Disney has asked AMA to build ships, and they've won awards for these ships because they have staterooms that sleep up to five people. Mm -hmm. They they can accommodate families. You're paying for that accommodation, but they can accommodate up to five people in one room. That is kind of unheard of in uh, river cruising. There was not... We had the biggest room on the ship, and it slept two people. Mm -hmm. None of them slept any more than that so if you were a family with two adults and two kids you need two staterooms right. the other thing i want to go back to you talked about the social aspect of this cruise because we traveled with 30 people mm -hmm. who knew us and most of which we most of who we had traveled with before and were friends of ours there was one couple out of the 30 that we had not met before personally, right so we had um you know people around us all the whole time we had a table that was always people we knew right. however one of the things i did notice was that the people the passengers on the ship were friendly from like the second you got on. Right. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Where you're from? I think they were used to being on this type of cruise and realized that that was part of the experience. That it's a very social thing, and that they're going to get together and they're going to have dinner together and hang I out. I mean, there was not a lot of hand holding and stuff like that. It was mostly at dinners and stuff like that. Right. Or when you went out on a shore excursion. Oh well, we're all been assigned to bus A. 
because they would take five or six buses out. Mm -hmm. And I heard people saying, listen, my friends are on bus A. And they would say, oh, well, go see if there's somebody on bus B who will trade with you. And invariably that happened because some people didn't care and some people were trying to stay together. I don't think you would find it. I think you could do it at your level. However, I want to be honest, at dinner, you're probably going to sit with you're going to sit with other people. There is no room service on this ship. However, if you didn't want to sit with people at dinner upstairs in the Akavit Terrace, they were serving almost the same thing, but that was fairly empty. You're making me sound very antisocial. You are. You are. <laughs> you're you going to up on deck you with your life preserver. <laughs> yeah. You do know I've met you, right? I have traveled with you before. I am familiar. <laughs> the other thing I want to talk, point out about the food, we talked about the food was very, very good. We thought the food got better during the cruise. Um, but in addition to what was offered on the menu, at any point you could get a plain steak. You could get a piece of chicken or a piece of fish. I actually thought about you. There would be three, two or three appetizers, two or three entrees, and two or three desserts. Choices, right. Choices. And they were, for you, and not everybody knows, Tracy, but for you they were fairly exotic. But as John said, the other side of the menu, you could get um, salmon grilled or blackened or there was a steak there was chicken and there was always vegetarian on uh, option and they were they didn't call them lighter fur they, they called them classic fare or something like that and then you could pick and choose the sides that were available throughout the, and the ship and the the chef was very accommodating would make changes for you if there's something you didn't care for or can i have this without this yeah. or can i have more was it linda enough? Was no, she the um, chef too? No, Connie. 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 No, it was a very nice young <laughs> man um, who had a, several of the women in our party a flutter. <laughs> he was a handsome young man, and he was a bit of a flirt. Oh. And he would come around to your table, and you know, he'd ask you how you were doing. And he had a very thick, was he French, I believe? Oh. French accent. And how are you doing? That was a horrible Is French accent. Is that your accent. French accent? Oh, it's French accent. <laughs> of all the time you spent in Pepe Paris, Le that's the best you come up with. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That was that. Uh, Sounds like fun. Um, it was a great time. The ship was great. So, so we're going to end it there for our discussion of the ship itself, and we're going to pick this up. We have uh, a two-parter, so next week we'll doing part two where we get a little bit more into the itinerary and talk about what we did and what's offered to other folks. Um, what we are doing for our Dreams Unlimited Travel podcast is at the end of every show, we are spotlighting an agent who is not here, who couldn't make it to the table this week. And um, we want to make sure that they get a little bit of recognition and also put a face to a name. If this is your agent, perhaps you might recognize them. And our uh, spotlighted agent today is Stacy Wood. Um, Stacy currently There's another lives. glamour shot. I know. Her. Oh, she went fancy. She went black and white. She did. <laughs> Stacy currently lives in upstate South Carolina, but feels lucky to have lived in some amazing places along the way, Buffalo, Charleston, and the Jersey Shore, and the Jersey Shore where she grew up. She graduated from the College of Charleston in 93 and taught elementary school until 2003. Um, Stacy currently books Walt Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, and Universal Studios Vacations. If you're interested in any of those destinations, if you'd like to work with Stacy. You can contact her at her email address on the slide. Stacy's very, very friendly. I like Stacy. Sweetheart. We love Stacy to death. All right, so that'll do it for our show this week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for participating. I appreciate our panel here today. Um, and we hope you have a great week, and we hope you have a great vacation. <laughs>